Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here for a very basic video. It's not anything revolutionary, not anything new, but if you've ever been in a reading slump, maybe you know this, but like setting a TBR for yourself, picking a handful of books that sound decently okay to you at the moment can kind of help you get out of a reading slump. I'm currently working on a video where I take the advice of an article from Epic Reads on how to get out of a reading slump, so stay tuned for that. But in addition to that, I'm going to be trying my own method not in that video, just in general. And that's setting a TBR for myself because then I feel like I can just go to that list and pick a book as opposed to just like staring at my vast bookshelves and being overwhelmed and then not reading anything. A lot of them are fall vibes. I went really basic. Again, like I said, went really like witchy, spooky season, fall vibes with a couple of exceptions. Before we get started, I want to remind you guys to hit subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the notification bell because that makes me feel happy inside. And I need some dopamine. So if you subscribe and hit the like button, that'll give me a dopamine rush. And I appreciate it because I really need some right now. Also, I have a lot of like spooky Halloween designs up on my Redbubble shop right now. So as always, I'll link my Redbubble shop down below. So check those out if you are interested in some spooky, spooky Halloween fun design things. I don't have a lot of these books with me. I'm currently at home visiting my parents for the three-day weekend so I didn't bring all of these with me but like they'll be up here somewhere on the screen for your viewing pleasure don't you worry. The first book that I picked is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I meant to read this last year and I didn't get around to it and it just feels like such an October book to me that I just didn't want to pick it up at any other time of the year. I know I could have I read a lot of witch books when it isn't you know October but for some reason this one in particular just it called out to me. It called out to me as an October book. The premise of this book is that we have a trans boy who is, you know, really determined to prove his gender to his Latino family. And in order to do so, he summons a ghost that won't leave him alone. And they kind of have to help each other. And I think there's like a romance involved. And I just love the idea and the premise of this story. So I can't wait to pick it up. But I'm also in a reading slump. So let's see if that actually happens. I hope so because I don't want to wait until next October. The next book on my TBR is actually just an author I want to read another book from and there's lots of options. So that is Grace Draven. I read Entreat Me last year and I loved it. I read it around this time. I remember I like started in the morning and I finished it in the afternoon because I just could not put it down. I loved it so much. I think her writing is really good. I liked her story, her plot, her characters, just like everything was just really well done in my opinion and I just had a great time. So I'm hoping that again this will be an easy one to kind of help me through this reading slump. Um, and there are a lot of options, like I said. So there's Master of Crows, I think is one. There's Phoenix Unbound, which is like a series, I think, and I have both books. There's also Radiance and Adalon, which I think are also a series. So there's so many options in terms of Grace Draven books, and I think that it would be nice. It's a nice fantasy romance, like a steamy fantasy romance where like the plot is good. There's also some like romance elements, so I can get really invested in that and that kind of helps me pu push through the story. I'm usually invested in the characters so looking forward to some Grace Draven hopefully this fall and I highly recommend her for you too. Definitely read and treat me if you haven't already. It's really good. The next is a series that now looking at it I don't know if I should have picked for fall. I think I should have picked it for winter. Who knows? Maybe featured in my winter TBR as well. That is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. So the Winter Night trilogy which as you can see Winter Night it's not autumn night, it's not fall night, it's winter night, but still I just felt the vibes. I feel like for me fall and winter are like sibling seasons. I just associate them together. I feel like fall and winter, I mean they have their own aesthetic, but like it all combines into one big aesthetic for me. I feel like my nail polish colors during that time are kind of the same and like my outfit choices and that kind of thing. So I feel like that's why in my head I kind of associate them together. But this is a Russian Orthodox folklore inspired fantasy and I'm Romanian Orthodox if you didn't know. So this has really intrigued me for a while. I think it's going to be really interesting. It takes place in a medieval Russian village and we have our main character whose name I think is Vasya and she can see like the spiritual creatures in the village and that leads the village people and the orthodox church to believe that she's a witch which obviously like 
probably not a good thing for her for people to think she's a witch especially in medieval times it's just like not a good not a good time but it is an adult fantasy series so I think we see our main character grow up and I'm just really intrigued by this like I think it's gonna be really cool I'm excited to see like how the series progresses I think that's my favorite thing about a series I know some people don't like being invested in that but I love seeing where we start in book one to where we end in book three and not just in terms of plot but also just in terms of vibes and not how the story ends but how it progresses and how each book is different than the other I just love that so I'm very excited to try to pick this one up. The next book that I would like to pick up is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson, another witchy book. I just remember seeing a lot about this last year and being really intrigued by it. I think this is another one that may be not similar to Winter Night in terms of the, you know, actual story, but the premise is similar. Like, there's a young woman who discovers these powers within herself and she lives in a Puritan society and obviously got to keep it from the Puritans because they were going to try to burn you at the stake. And uh, so in terms of that, like, like the witch having powers and trying to keep it from like an ultra religious society is similar but I think the actual story is very very different very different vibes from the summaries but again into the witchy vibes it's October I will still be reading witchy stuff in November it's fine October is too short of a month so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it going do all the witchy things the next book that I have here on my TBR for fall is Trouble the Saints by Alea Don Johnson. I got this book for my birthday this year from a friend and I remember seeing the cover and reading the premise and being so confused that I just knew I needed to pick it up. I don't fully understand what this is about. Apparently it's the Night Circus meets the Underground Railroad, which I thought was very intriguing, very interesting description. The Night Circus is one of my favorite books. Haven't run the Underground Railroad yet, but I do really want to. So it just sounded really cool. I think the backdrop is Manhattan around World War II. So there's just a lot going on here that I think is cool. And I like the idea of like not really knowing what it's about going in. I think there's a lot going on. Um, and it just sounds really good. So let me know if you've read it actually, because I'm kind of curious. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. I remember it got a lot of buzz before it came out as a pre-order, but then I haven't heard much about it since. Next, I want to read a book that I've been trying to read for forever, for so long this year, and that is Voyager by Diana Gabaldon. I have been, like I said, meaning to read this for a while, ever since I finished Dragonfly and Amber in like March. I've just been wanting to pick this up. I'm not going to be able to finish the series in time for Go Tell the Bees I'm Gone, which is the last book, or at least the next book in the series, but that's okay. As long as I keep going steadily, surely I will make it through the book. So I really, 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 really want to get to it in October. At least starting in October. I might not be able to finish, but I would like to at least just start this dang book because it's been forever. <laughs> If you don't know what Outlander in general is about, I'm going to give you a very simple description. But past the first book, can't really tell you much. Honestly, past the first, like, 100, 200 pages of the first book, I can't give you much because the story just develops so much from there. But we essentially have Claire Beecham, and she is this British woman who's just gotten back from the war with her husband. And they go to Scotland for, like, kind of a honeymoon-ish because, you know, they've been apart because of the war. She was a nurse and he was like fighting, I'm pretty sure. And then Claire accidentally time travels to around 1743 uh, from 1945. So as you can imagine, a bit of a shock. And she meets Jamie Fraser. And the story develops from there. So just go pick it up if it sounds intriguing to you. It is a commitment. I will say the books are thick, but they're so good. And the show is amazing. So I'm trying to read the books in like before I watch the, each season. So I've read the first book, then I watched the first season, read the second book, watched the second season. So that's kind of how I'm trying to do it just because I do like then watching the season and comparing it to the book because I like both so much. Next book I want to pick up isn't necessarily fall vibes, it's just vibes, and that's The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I've been meaning to read this since I bought it. I think I bought it sometime last year. I was supposed to buddy read it with my friend, and then she read it, and I haven't gotten to it yet. So this is definitely one that I've been anticipating for so long, and I think it's going to be so good, but it definitely is going to be intense and, you know, a little more gritty. So I think I need to be out of my reading slump to get to this one, but I'm hoping I can read it, like, maybe towards the end of fall, beginning of winter, but it's definitely up there for me. There is, like, kind of a boarding school vibe at the beginning, from what I know, a lot of war talk, just a lot of intense things, a lot of strategy. So I am definitely looking forward to picking that up. 
Next is kind of like a fun trilogy that I want to get to and that is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Partially I want to read this fall winter because it gives me fall winter vibes. Again this might bleed into my winter TBR but I really 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 want to watch the show because I also think that will give me fall winter vibes so I want to read the books first and I just think it'll be like a fun quick easy fantasy read. It's a fantasy romance. It's not like a really really like oh my god the best written series ever. I think it's just going to be really entertaining. There's like witches and vampires and like a historical setting which I think is cool. Like I think our main female character is historian and she's also a witch I think and then she meets like this vampire scientist or something and they have a forbidden romance but they're also like dealing with all this stuff. I think it'll be really fun. For Next we have three Jane Austen books because I want to finish out that challenge that I was taking a part of at the beginning of the year, that readathon, and I kind of fell behind. But I read earlier this year Pride and Prejudice for the second time, I don't, or third time. I've read it a lot. And then I reread Persuasion, and I read Sense and Sensibility for the first time. So I have three more of her main books to read before this year ends, and then next year I am going to find a list of all her other books that are, you know, not the six main finished complete works, but like Love and Friendship, Sanditon, all those books. I want to do those next year once I finish the six main novels. Before this challenge I had already read four out of the six Jane Austen books and I had Mansfield Park left and Sense and Sensibility. So the last three I have to read for this year are Mansfield Park, I haven't read that one yet. I have to reread Northanger Abbey and I have to reread Emma. So I am really looking forward to that. I love Jane Austen, one of my favorite authors. Some people are not into her books. I don't get it. You're allowed to feel what you want, but I personally don't understand you. Mark Twain would understand you because he freaking hated Jane Austen, which is very upsetting to me. In my opinion, Jane Austen has very feminist pieces of literature for her time. I think there's so much. I want to make a video just talking about why I love her book so much and not from a, oh, it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. I love romance, but genuinely like the themes and the claims that she was making in a society that just like did not stand for those things at the time. And yes, I know it's mainly white feminism, but like to be fair to her, she was like a white woman living in England at the time. So I don't think her worldview was that expanded. Obviously, this is not the only type of literature you should be reading. I'm, I'm just, I'm talking about it for what it is. And for what it is, it's really good and was very forward thinking for the time. Point is, I love Jane Austen. I think she's wonderful. I love her books. Not only are they a fun time, but I think the social commentary in them is so great. They're so witty. I just, I love her. So 10 out of 10, recommend Jane Austen. Like no one's ever recommended Jane Austen to you before. I'm sure that I'm the first person to really tell you to read an Austen novel, but you know, I'm just doing the Lord's work here today and I'm just spreading the the word. You know, just just trying to do my best, do my part in today's society. Next, I want to read Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. I feel like this is such a traditional like witchy vibe series and like then it got turned into a TV show and I have all four books so I think it'd be pretty easy for me to at least start this series. I don't know anything about these books other than there are magical vibes and I don't want to know anything other than that because sometimes I like to know going in but sometimes I like to just vibe and to, with this series I just want to vibe. I just want to go in and be like what kind of magic are we doing today, folks? Next, we have The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I love Samantha Shannon on Twitter, and I still haven't read a book by her, and I have all of her books. I even have a signed copy of one of her books. So I feel like it's time. It's time for me to begin my Samantha Shannon journey, and I think The Bone Season is a great way to start. People love The Bone Season. It's like such a popular, famous book. So I think it's about time that I get on that train. Again, magical vibes love magic witchy vibes and I'm trying to cram it all in in October. Next is a more random book, not really witchy vibes, but there is definitely like a fantasy fun element and that is Redemptor by Jordan Fuego, which is right here behind me. I have like four copies of this book at this point, so maybe five. Honestly, I have a lot of copies of her books because I'm obsessed with Jordan Fuego and I love her and her writing is amazing. Ray Barrow was one of my favorite books of last year of like, it was just, I'm obsessed with it. I think it is one of the best YA fantasy out there. If you haven't read it, go read it. It is an any season book. Read it summer, spring, 
fall, winter, whenever, just read this book. It is so good. I cannot express to you how incredible this book is. I still haven't got to Redemptor, which you're probably like, Maria, if you love it so much, why haven't you read it yet? It's been out for a bit. Reading Slump, and I don't want to ruin my experience of this book by reading it when I'm in a reading slump. That's another one on my TBR. Next is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. From what I know, this is like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Other than that, don't know anything. It's supposed to be like a fun YA fantasy, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Already know the story of Beauty and the Beast, so I feel like if I read any more, I'll be able to predict too much of the plot and then I won't enjoy it as much. Next, we have a book that hasn't come out yet, but it's coming out October 19th, and that is A Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I think this will be great to get me out of a reading slump. Jennifer L. Armentrout's books... This is gonna sound mean, but it's like not meant to be mean. It's just like really good trash. <laughs> like, it's more like when you watch reality TV. Like, I feel like this season, for example, of Bachelor in Paradise, like it's trash TV, but the sound quality is insane considering how many people they have to mic and the fact that they're on a beach and they're all running around. That audio is crazy clear. The camera work, like the intro montage, like it's super well done. Like these people are doing an amazing job to create this like reality TV show that's like kind of trash so that's kind of what I mean by that. It's just it's not the pinnacle of literature It's not gonna go down in the Hall of Fame of like best books ever But is it entertaining and fun and like decently written? So this is a prequel to the From Blood and Ash series and I just got to read it I didn't really need a story from Nyctos. Not gonna lie. I was like, why are we doing this? But I'll read it Next, we have like any book by Cassandra Clare. I just want to keep going with my Cassandra Clare vibes. I also feel like because we have warlocks and werewolves and vampires and all these different creatures, including the shadow hunters and demons and stuff, like it feels very fall to me. Fall and winter, honestly, again, like I said, because I feel like the elements are fall vibes, but then the actual feel of the story as you're reading feels wintry to me. So I'm really excited to keep going with that. I'm hoping I'll like the other books as much as I loved The Infernal Devices. The Moral Instruments was okay for me, but The Infernal Devices was so good. So I can't wait to keep going with that. And yeah, I'm just hoping to pick up at least one Cassandra Clare book this fall. Next, I'm going to rapid fire three books that are NetGalley books that I want to read. I have an insane number of NetGalley arcs to read. Like an insane number. It's it's actually bad and brings me anxiety. I have a spreadsheet in my Notion in order to organize it. Like how many pages do I need to read a book before that? Because sometimes I'm a dummy and I request books that have a first book that I haven't read. So then I have to read the first book because you can't review a sequel if you haven't read the first book. Or I guess you can, but that's not being a very good reviewer. So that's that's what needs to happen. I need to do that. And I, I just picked three. Hopefully I'll read more. There are so many witch books I have in there. So I might, you know, sporadically pick up a different witch book. Like I think I have at least 15 when I like search the word witch. I had at least 15 books with the word witch in the title. And that's not even all the books that have to do with witches. It's just the ones with witch in the title. I don't know what it is with me requesting so many witch books throughout the year. So the three books I picked are Talk to Me by T.C. Boyle. I think this has to do with like a behaviorist and there's like a monkey on the cover or an orangutan or something. There's something going on with some sort of primate. And I think it's cool. I read Tortilla Curtain in high school that book has stuck with me for a very long time, and I can't tell if it's a good or a bad book. All I can say is that it was very intense. And the last two in the Net Galley category is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. And that, again, witch book, picked a witch book. We don't need to go into it anymore. It looks really good, and I've been meaning to read it for a while. And lastly, Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I'll either read this or the House on the Cerulean Sea first. I don't think you have to read them in any particular order. I just haven't read anything by TJ Klune yet, but I really, 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 really want to read at least one. I'm pretty sure my physical copy already came in the mail, so I won't even be reading an arc. Like, I'm pretty sure at least two out of these three, if not all of them, have already come out. So I've already failed in terms of reading the arc, but I can at least still review it. I still try to support the books I get as arcs as long as I like them, so I'll, like, get a Kindle copy or a physical copy, again, as long as I enjoyed it, because I'm trying not to be as, like, consumerism-y. But yes, those are the books on my fall TBR. We have been on a journey today. I hope that you enjoyed hearing what books I plan on reading in fall. Please let me know which one of these I should get to first. Give me some reading slump motivation. Please, I need it. I need the motivation. I need the dopamine. Please talk to me in the comments and let me know which one of these I should read first. What are you planning on reading in fall? Just anything you want to tell me. 
As always, I leave my social media links down below, like my Instagram, my Twitter, now my website. I have created a website. Who am I? A young professional? I don't know, but yeah, I always have those down below. I also have my red bubble shop now down there, so you can check that out. I always leave links to like petitions and donation sites for current events and like things I'm passionate about, so you can always check that out down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!